kindly administer the oath, please. Aye. I, Simon Ose Mensa, swear by the Almighty God, swear by the Almighty God, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, that the evidence I shall give before this committee, touching the matter in issue, touching the matter in issue, shall be the truth, shall be the truth, the whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. so help me, God. Honourable members, let me also now announce at the out outset that in view of our circumstances, we have discussed and agreed at leadership that for each of the nominees, six people from each side will be allowed. So the leadership will determine which six people can ask questions before we come to leadership. Thank you very much. Honourable Frederick Osei Mensa, you've been a member of parliament for three terms. You were a member of the ECOWAS parliament and indeed uh, a deputy speaker of the ECOWAS parliament. Mm -hmm. You've been a regional minister for the region of Ashanti in the last four years. Um, you probably are learning to compete with the chiefs in Ashanti, so <laughs> now, but with, with your cloth, how rich and how well you have uh, worn it, it shows that royalty is uh, seeping into you <laughs> gradually. <laughs> now, um, many of us here have known you in the house and at the Okwas committee. Yes. Yeah. Now, in addition to these three, which for our purposes, qualification to be a minister. Uh, is there any other thing you may wish us to know? All right, thank you very much. First of all, Honorable Chairman, I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate members of the committee for your successful elections since this is the first time I'm meeting you. I pray that the Almighty God will give you the strength and courage and wisdom to execute your responsibilities for the betterment of Ghana. Ramu Chairman, besides the three things that you mentioned, I taught at uh, Adebi Commercial Institute teaching mathematics and economics. That was after sixth form. I did my national service at Consulting for Innovations in Human Settlement Development. And then after my national service, I was fully engaged that I completed the national service in 1992, and then I was engaged immediately after that. Then, about a year and a half later, I got appointment at Agricultural Development Bank as a credit officer. Some of the banks called uh, project. Honorable officer. nominees, that's fine. We are happy about all that. All that matters to us is that you qualify by our constitutional remit. So all right, now we'll you. open the floor for members to ask you questions. Let your experience reflect in how you answer your questions. Right. Okay. All right. Now, Honorable Minority Leader, I'll start. Chairman, let me also welcome and congratulate our colleague Simon Osei Mensa, who would be representing the present in a key and important region of the country, Ashanti, Ashanti region. And uh, Chairman, just going through his CV, this is just for my nomenclature purposes. I see you say you are acting Ashanti Regional Minister. I will prefer present representative in Ashanti region. 
uh, noting that uh, others may disagree with me, the Supreme Court ruling in J.H. Mercer versus Attorney General that you yourself have read, I would rather prefer that you are representing the president in that uh, capacity. Now, Chairman, I don't see committees he served in Parliament. Take, a call, take your CV and show me where you have itemized which committees of Parliament you served on. Okay, I've seen it now in paragraph 5B, public accounts. Suffice it to say that you just leave it open-ended without giving us some, uh, the last period, the sunset. There's always a C January 2017 uh, uh, and a C January 2020. So take note of that. I'm sure Chairman will indulge you to deal with it. Uh, the Ashanti region, road infrastructure, remains a major problem. We all drive through, if I have to go to Tamale, uh, via Techima, Akumadan, I have to come through Swami. And the difficulty is that there's just one way traditional route. Other than that, no option. There's no alternative route. If I want to drive out and avoid the congested traffic in the Ashanti region to get up to Bunu and to the north, what will you do about that should you get confirmed as minister? Thank you, Chairman. All right, thank you very much. There are two things I'm considering. The first one is to have a second ring road around Greater Kumasi. That road will pass through a Josu Jabin Kwabri East in Kawe, Achumakwa Angoma, Bosomchi, and it will join a Josu again. When we have this second ring road, vehicles that have no business in the central business district area of Kumasi will just join the second ring road, and when we get to the point that they have to turn, then they will turn. So for instance, if you have to use the Techima road, you may not need to drive up to Anraga Junction before you turn right. But you join the ring road just before a Joso, and then you branch off, and the designs have been completed. The other option is to look at critical link routes. For instance, you get to Apatrapa Junction, there's a road that we can use to join Kwabri East. Or when you get to uh, Buankra, immediately after Buankra, there was a critical link road that goes through Jabin, which will not need to come back to uh, Anraga Junction. So these are the two options we are considering now. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman says he has a follow-up. Thank you. Honorable Minister, these designs were in place when I was working at DGLA 20 years ago. They have been, we've been talking about them. The road reservations that we made are being encroached upon because no action is taken. Why should I be hopeful that in the next four years anything will happen? Honorable Chairman, when you graciously gave me the nod and I was sworn in in 2017, the major problem in Ashanti region was road infrastructure. So I prioritized the road. The first one I did was to ensure that all bridges that were broken, but the roads were very good, we fixed those uh, bridges. Then we, I look at some major roads leading to Kumasi. And the, major, the, the most important one was the Accra Kumasi Road that has the highest volume of traffic. And the major problem on that road was to remove the four runabouts that were creating traffic congestion and lots of accidents in the, in the Kumasi metropolis or maybe in Ashanti region. Now, after removing them, then I had to look at the highways. Now, most of the highways have been awarded on contract. So my preoccupation will be on the outer ring road now because 
some improvement. I won't say we've reached where we want to go, but some improvements have been achieved in the road sector. And for that matter, I'll give a lot of concentration on the outer inner ring road and critical link roads. Chairman, if we were to follow up on yours again, so state of roads in Ashanti region, tell us what percent is more trouble, what is more trouble, what is good. You are the leaders with that. What's the state of road? You say good work have been done. Share, share with us the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable, we have about 40% that you can see are good. That is within the greater Kumasi area. Then about 30 something very good, and we have the rest being bad. But it's an improvement, even though we still lag behind when it comes to road development. During the last four years, with the help of the Minister for Roads and Highways and other people, uh, some of the members of parliament from the region and some other people from the region, we were able to obtain 189 separate projects, road projects. 40 of them highways, then 49 urban, urban roads, and then 100 feeder roads. And the total length is 2,099 kilometers. Uh, but for the COVID, I'm sure most of them have been completed. But I believe that this time we'll complete most of them and then get more projects in addition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Ashanti again noted for its rich cultural heritage. The Adua dance, if you read Professor Nkatia, or many of the values and cultures of the Ashanti people, may he so rest in peace. Yet we are not even able to export it. But that is possible. What's your view on what to do for tourism development for the Ashanti, taking advantage of those uh, cultural practices for purposes of exports? Thank you very much, Honorable. Honorable, this particular term, if you give me the nod, my focus will be on the tourism sector among others. But during my first term, I had discussions with the Minister for Trade and Industries and Otunfo, the possibility of we obtaining international patent rights for instance, for Kente. As we are all aware, Kente originated from Ghana. But now, some other countries are coming out with some designs that appear to be Kente. And until we get the patent right for Kente, for instance, it will be difficult, which is a major aspect of our culture. Kente is not moving only in Ashanti region. I know parts of Wuta regions too, they produce Kente. So if we are able to obtain patent right for the weaving of Kente, it will help us and improve upon the, the culture of this country, and it will boost also tourism. The other aspect will be Lake Busumpi, which already some true uh, investors have come. They've shown interest I have asked them to submit detailed proposals so that we look at it. We want to see if they're possible that we develop Lagos into an integrated international tourism center, ecotourism center, where people can go and visit. Uh, at least that is the only natural lake in West Africa. And if you're able to develop it, it will help us a lot. The first step we needed to do was the road to Lagos from Kumasi was very bad, but it has been awarded on contract, even though it's not moving as fast as we want. Some portions have already been uh, asphalted, 
And the moment we finish, it will ease travel from Kumasi to Lagos. And if these two investors, at least if one can come up with a very acceptable proposal, maybe you can develop the place as I'm thinking to an integrated international ecotourism center. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, again, uh, President John Dramani Mahama, as he then was, initiated the modernization and redevelopment of the Kumasi Central Market. You inherited it. We know that government has further secured financing to expand it. There are problems in those who originally were occupants in the shops and stores. And we've had even conflicts between you and the mayor of Kumasi in the distribution. What is the status of those stores? Or just speak to the market development uh, project. The first phase, where is it? The second phase, where are you with it? Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, the committee that oversees the management of the market. Surprisingly, the Regional Coordinating Council is not involved. So anytime the Regional Minister or the Regional Coordinating Council comes in, then there's a problem between the manage management committee and either the contractor or the traders. So what I know now is that all the shops have been allocated, even though initially there were some challenges. The, the shops have been allocated the first batch, those who were there in 2015, before the project commenced, have been moved to the, were moved to the police first. And then the land where we needed to commence the second phase, also we started, but they said they need more additional land, which we work on and have issued a press release that uh, by the end of 7th of this March, we want them to leave so that uh, we don't have problems with the financing of the project. Chairman, I know that this is done, led by the Ministry for Local Government and Rural Development. Other parts of the country may require same. Do you anticipate a third phase of that project? Yes, definitely there should be a third phase of the project. Because if we don't get the third phase, it will be extremely difficult for us to decongest the central business district area. The you know, market women are not happy with the committee working on it, and they think that in allocating the shops, there was some discrimination against a section of them. What do you have to say to that? Yes, such reports came to me. That is why uh, the movement is being delayed. So at that point, I had to set up a committee at the Regional Coordinating Council under my supervision, and then set three decks to receive the various complaints. It, it was after I had received the complaint and resolved them. That was when we were able to move the traders from Central Market to the Kajetia project. So what will you do to please those dissatisfied market women or men who are not happy with the way you allocated the shop? How much are you taking as fees? How much do they pay for each of those shops? You have an idea how much it is? Thank you, uh, what I know that it, it varies depending on the size of Share the, the range with us, whatever numbers you have. How uh, much are they paying for those shops? I know some is around 7,000. We have some around 12,000. Uh, you don't have some above 12,000? No, we have some above 12,000. So stated. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. I said some around 7,000, some 12,000, and some above 12,000. I think it's about 25,000 something. Yeah, Chairman, I raise this because you know, you come, government comes to parliament under a ministry of local government and gets approval for a loan facility to build a market. You are there making charges between seven to 12,000 Ghana cities for purposes of amortizing the loan. Yet the central government is not benefiting from that money. And when the agreement came before parliament the last time, we requested that there must be a backup agreement between the KMA and the Ministry of Local Government and Government as to how the contribution of the market women will assist the central government in amortizing the loan. 
What do you have to say to this? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Honorable Member, to the best of my knowledge, there is an agreement uh, among PME, Minister of Local Government, and Minister of Finance. As to the sharing formula is what I don't know. So I cannot tell. But I know that there was an Has agreement. Has any money ever been paid to central government from that fund? And how much have accrued to that fund? Can you share with this committee? Uh, Honorable Member, if I see that I have that information, I will not be truthful to you. I don't have the number. I will find out. Chairman, we will require that details to help government understand how it will service that uh, debt. Please, he says he doesn't have that information, so he can provide it. It's for KMA. If we make that demand of him, he may have to go to KMA and get that. So but Chairman, he supervises KMA. <laughs> KMA supervises is a central... Him. I mean, and on authority on its own. Uh, if but we want it, we may ask. No, them. Chairman, they come we'll here discuss and discuss I read. Okay, we we'll discuss it further. Okay, now what's the status of the Onfanachi maternity block project? A few weeks ago, there were some con legitimate concerns raised about it. What's the status of it? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Member. You know, the project has been awarded on contract. Initially, when the contractor and the consultants did reconnaissance survey, they made an indication that outwardly the building looked very strong and they felt there was a possibility of doing reinforcement of the structure and continue with the project. Within the contract, the contractor was also supposed to do, after, after the signing of the contract, the contractor was supposed to do an in-depth structural integrity test of the building. So they needed to excavate, to look at the columns, look at the concrete, etc. Now, after doing the structural integrity test, the information they brought was that it has filled the text, and truly, I went there myself. Some of the concrete, you can use your hand to, break, to disintegrate them. So, and then most of the iron rods have also rusted. And then you could see that the, the type of iron rod they use for this structure are even smaller. So the consultant said that they would not like to advise the contractor to continue with the project as it is, or do reinforcement, but rather demolish the whole structure. So that is where we are now. German crime, crime, the incidence of crime in the Ashanti region, as I read it, crime is very high. Even the incidence of what the criminologists call recidivism, it is again reported that in Ashanti is also very high. What do you intend to do as chairman of RESTEC to contain crime in the region, together with the traditional authorities and the people there? Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Ranking Member. Honorable, it's true we've not been able to maybe totally eliminate crime in Ashanti region. But I know it's an impossibility anyway. But we brought it down significantly, even though I will be the first to admit that still there are some form of robberies, uh, kidnapping, and sometimes you have highway robbery, etc. But the, the rate has come down significantly. Uh, I will, at this point, express my appreciation and gratitude to the members of the Regional Security Council and the chiefs and people of the region for giving me the needed support. In fact, uh, we work on it. We are intensifying highway patrols and we have joint teams, security teams made up of the police and the military. The police lead and then the military gives them the support. Uh, once in a while we do unannounced soups we do some soups, intelligent legs in some areas just to bring down the crime. 
But from 2017, I would say the security issues we inherited, uh, we've done quite well. For instance, uh, when we took over the major security issues that were pending, one was the uh, Abu Ghraib men minute. And then we had the issue of relocation of the capital of Achimapa Woma from Fuansi to Chedie, as per the ruling of Supreme Court in 2012. We used to have protracted communal crashes between Ashanti youth and Zungu youth around Kwabri East area. We've been able to resolve all these things. If, if, if you might recall, the issue of Abugo Kato Health Minute didn't start today. Even the first operation, Cow Leg, was in 1992. And in uh, 2017, that was about 25 years. But because of the good systems we put in place, now Abugo is exporting plantain and maize to Burkina Faso. Say that when you go to Burkina Faso, Ugadugu now, we have Agogo uh, food market. That is where they sell plantain and maize. The other one, in the Supreme Court ruling, it was tough. If somebody having uh, the district capital for more than 10 years, and all of a sudden with the ruling, they say move it from Fuansi to Chedia. But cool health prevailed and with the support of the chiefs and the people of Fuansi and Chedia, uh, successfully we've been able to relocate the capital from Fuansi to Chedia. Additionally, if we take the Ehia communal crisis, now we've been able to solve it. Uh, it, it was protracted almost every year, it occurred. But what we did was that uh, we needed to establish a new police station at the place and put some non-uniformed people among the group so that they could provide intelligence any time uh, it wanted to raise its ugly head. And now the situation has come under control. Since 2008, we've not witnessed it again. So there are several achievements. I wouldn't say that uh, we've performed extraordinary, but at least we've done well in the area of security. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. All right. Going by the arrangement here. Honorable Zero. Zero. It's your turn, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Honorable Nominees. Regional Minister, President's Representative in Asante Region. Asante Region has over almost 5 million. The population of Asante region is about 5 million, right? It's, a, it's almost 6 million. 6 it's million about now, yeah. Per, per the projection for 2020 is 5,924,378. So that's over 5 million people in Asante right. region alone. And we've read intermittently in the media about water shortages in parts of the region, especially in Kumasi. What have you been doing about it, and what will you do if you get the nod of this uh, committee and go back to your position to ease the issues of water shortage on the people of Ashanti region? All right, thank you very much. Yes, once in a while we have problems with water in Ashanti region, and these have been due to breakdown in some of the equipment. For instance, at a point, the, over the waterworks, we had problem with power supply. And as a result, we needed to replace a generator there before they could pump. Once they couldn't pump the water, all those who were taking their supplies from that source definitely will have to have problems. We, sometimes they will do diversion, but they will not be working very well. Some of the pipes are also very old, and you quite often see water bursting from place to place and they need to work on it. When they are going to work on such ones, definitely they will have to crew the, the, the task and to make sure that uh, they can do proper work. Uh, besides that, if there are electricity problems, uh, it also results in this one. Um, but it's not 
very serious as of now. That is what I'll say. The once in a while we do have experience them. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Very well. Honorable Patrick Obama. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable, um, you live in Kumasi with us, Anthony, a very peaceful man. And I'm sure you have a very good working relationship with him. And um, in the communities around Mesia Valley, you have a Swansea, Abu Abu, a Grove Room region. So, all have all a manner of persons living around. I read in the media, I just Googled you, issuing a statement on the 9th of October 2018. I didn't say I was superior to Nordness or Semenza. Reading this on Ghana Web, I realized there was an issue with a certain tape which was attributed to you. Having been a member of parliament and looking at the Tufu and the region you represent, the Shanti region has lived with Evers, Gaz, Muslims. What is the story about this tape that I'm reading? It's, it's, it's. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Member uh, also saw the video, and I speak to this issue with the greatest of sorrow and the highest of passion. This tape, I should say, that is a pure ethnocentric concussion by somebody who dislikes me to the core. That tape is not my voice. I know nothing about it. I'm not the architect of it. The Honorable Chairman, I'll beg not to pass or talk too much about this issue because I filed a suit. I filed a 10 million suit at the High Court against Militant Publications Limited, publishers of the Inside Newspaper, the acting editor of the Inside Newspaper, and one Ni Titi Tete, who claims to be the CEO of Strategic Thinkers Network. And the case is pending before the High Court. It has been called once. So with your permission, I'll please not to comment too much on the issue since it's before the court. Very well. Very well. It's so the matter is subject. I'm saying it's good he's saying this because I was going to make a comment further. I didn't know that there was a suit pending. All right. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Since the matter is subject, I will restrain myself. I wouldn't proceed. And I'll move to my second question, which is on um, industrialization in the Ashanti region. The Minister of Trade was here. Um, last week Friday, and he made a very, um, a very, he made a very bold statement to the fact that Kumasi was going to be the second industrial city in Ghana. We, we've lived, I'm not too old, but I've seen that most of the industries in Kumasi are gone, KBL and all the timber industries. That used to employ a lot of people are all gone. What are you going to do support the trade minister and the government and the president to bring back the industrial and commercial life in Kumasi to where it used to be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Honorable Chairman, we are working on this. Uh, before I became the regional minister in 2017, government had already acquired land for free zone. Fortunately, it's in the constituency of Honorable Lawyer John Kuma. Besides that, recently when I became the regional minister, in collaboration with the Minister for Trade and Industries, we've acquired over 3,000 acres of land for industrial purposes. That is the same area 
we are supposed to have the Buankra interchange. To realize the dream of industrialization in the Ashanti region, in my ne next term, if you confirm me, my concentration will be on three major projects. Not that I will ignore the other, but there are three major if we want to push forward the industrialization, industrialization agenda, as we are all wishing. One, the completion of the international airport, so that people can fly from outside Ghana straight to Kumasi. And you can check in at Kumasi and take your luggage at your final destination maybe in Rome. That's the first one. The second one, you see, one craft world has been on the drawing board for a long time. But honorable member, I can assure you that without any railway link between Tema and Buankra and Takrade and Buankra, the Buankra inland port will still be a drag. So my focus will also be in the extension of railway line from Tema to Buankra and from Takrade to Buankra. When we obtain those, I'm telling you definitely the industrialization agenda will be successful. Finally, uh, Chairman, please your microphone. Um, I want to ask a question that um, my brother from Asawase posed to one of your colleagues yesterday on substance abuse. Substance abuse. Most of the young people around in and around Kumasi uh, do take this tramadol. They call it tramor. Some crack. And you know where they are. I don't want to sit there and mention the names. What have you been able to do to change people's mindsets on this substance abuse? It's, it has to be a very important project in your second term. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, some members of the Regional Security Council have been educating the youth and people in Ashanti region in general on the media landscape, especially on the radio. The regional police commander, the crime officer, they go on air. We, we get slots at the various radio stations where they go and educate the people against the use of all these drugs. The other thing we also do is what I mentioned about these intelligent-led ships. The only thing is that the strategy, the current reset or the previous reset used was that when we make the arrest, we don't parade them publicly. Uh, especially, uh, you do shoot, you see some weapons, etc. You come and show it, then you keep frightening people. So what we do is that when they are arrested, they are sent to the court, they are prosecuted. If judgment is given in your favor, fine. If it's not given in your favor, then the law deals with them. Thank you. All right, I'm not going to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to first ask about the nominee. He has been in the region for the past four years. And uh, he has been a member of parliament before. And uh, he was what? And I was with him at the Kuwas parliament. Yes, we were in the Kuwas parliament together. But at this stage, that's what we are talking about. We are talking about different things altogether. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure he's aware that there are a lot of ongoing projects in the region, which some were started by the previous government, be it uh, health facilities, schools, and so on and so forth. What effort have you made in the past four years to get the ongoing project done, and what are you going to do, given the north, to ensure that all those facilities are completed 
for the people in the region to benefit. All right, thank you, my honorable member. Honorable chairman, yes, it's true. Uh, there are some projects, some started from the time of former President Kofo, some started during the time of former President Mahama. In the case of the hospital, we continue on with those projects. Now, if you take TEPA, Municipal Hospital, or Hafuano, North Municipal Hospital, it was completed last year and then commissioned. The Quiet Hospital was started during the time of the late Kutue Champion and continued by subsequent government, was also continued and handed over last year. That is, it was commissioned. But my understanding during the commissioning was the health officers told us was that after the commission, that is when the contractor trained the staff on the new equipment, how to use the new equipment. I was in the choir last Friday. They have started using the facility. The, they told us you don't move all the people and block. So you go department by department. So you start with department where there's not too much pressure. So now they moved the administration there. They've moved the physiotherapy unit there. They've moved the S3 unit there. And they are operating the mortuary. The information they gave me was that this week, the outpatient department will also move. And they say that as soon as the outpatient department moves to the place, automatically the wards must be released to them. Because if somebody comes, uh, maybe the person should be on admission. It's not that time they will have to refer or transfer the person to the old site. So that one is ongoing. Konongo Municipal Hospital, or Asante Achim Central Municipal Hospital, the contractor and the consultant informed me that they will be able to finish by the end of this month. And that one, I trust, they will finish by the end of this month. Kumewu, they said they can finish in 10, ten months. Uh, I have my doubts a little. That's one, you will give it about one year plus that they will finish, they can finish that project. Afari, military hospital. That also they projected to complete by the end of this month. But the worst scenario is that Afari, they should be able to complete that project by the end of the second quarter, latest, by the end of the second quarter. Seria Regional Hospital, they projected to complete by the end of May. So all these projects are ongoing. An additional uh, sword cutting has also been made. Uh, we are praying that we can get all these projects completed and the other new ones are done because Ashanti region, we have serious health problems. So with the completion of all these, I'm telling you, maybe the problem will be resolved significantly. So we didn't abandon them. And some of the school projects, too, we never abandoned them. We even completed most of them and added on. If you take for the four-year period, uh, educational infrastructure alone that we had in the region was 702. 424 for basic and 278 for senior high school. Most of them have been completed. So we did not, there are some one or two projects, maybe let me talk about the E block. Like Drobonso, now the government has decided to add a boarding facility because if you know that it will be difficult to operate that school as a community day school because you can never have enough students from that catchment area. And the community too is not all that big. So the government is providing boarding facility to that one. So all these, we didn't abandon them. If you come to Oyoko, 
the students that we have today is in there and ruled since I think 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the, the Barakese water system is the major source of uh, water to the people, particularly in Kumasi. Uh, I remember when I was a deputy minister, <coughs> we had a lot of challenges in regards to encroachment of the reserve uh, land for the facilities. We started uh, growing the area, growing uh, trees and clipping crops just to reclaim the lost uh, land. Uh, what are you doing? What are you going to do, given the north, to ensure that that facility is protected to prevent encroachment? Because when we lose it, <laughs> the whole community will be in crisis. What are you going to do to ensure that that Barakese facility is protected to continue to serve the people in Kumasi? And I believe that is in, is in your question, is it? Or no. that is not your question? Okay, okay. All right. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Chairman, yes, he's right. If you go to Barakese, there's encroachment. Some trees have been planted, more are being planted. Uh, but the major encroachment there is slightly different from the one at Owabi. This one, if we leave the land for the cultivation of cocoa farms, that Barakese area, and then when you go to uh, Owabi, that one is building construction. What I intend to pose in, if that would be acceptable by government, is to declare all buffer zones around what water treatment plants as security zones. If you're able to declare these as security zones and you have security personnel mining those places, we can stop this. Because those who build, they build even in the night. You get there the following day, the person has built. You demolish the wood, and next time somebody has built. So if it's possible, if that is possible, to declare buffer zones around water treatment plants as security, uh, security zones, maybe that will help us. For that is what I'm going to push there. As to whether it will be acceptable or not, I cannot tell, but that is what I'm going to propose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I just wish to advise that for the Owabi area, to get the map known, there was litigation in which I was very actively involved. There's an area called resettlement area. That was where all the development was going on. After that, then there's the forest and the catchment area. We strove to the resettlement area but the forest zone is where we should be very careful to avoid people encroaching. But some churches are already inside the forest zone. So if you look carefully, you'll be able to identify those areas and protect them. Thank you, Honorable Chairman. Mr. Chairman, uh, <coughs> there's a group in Ashanti region called the Zongo Coalition. I believe they even petitioned this committee because I've seen that they serve a copy to Mr. Speaker that they kick, kick against the reappointment of Timothy Minister for allegedly uh, making a disparaging uh, statement about nothingness. Honorable Chairman, I think I've responded to this. I think this. because reading the report, I saw that they sent a copy to Mr. Speaker. Is that the same? I don't, I don't That's a different that, thing. But no, but what I'm asking is that these people have written that they are kicking against uh, the nominee of, I mean, the nomination of... Honor Honor is in court. Please, subject can I finish? Project. Can you listen to me? I'm not asking you a question. What I'm asking the Honorable Minister, he's going to be a minister for all the people in the region. Why would you say to these people who are opposing your nomination 
as the Ashanti Regional Minister. That's the question I want to just ask. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I've been Minister for All in the region, and I'll continue to be Minister for All in the region. But this particular issue, I said it in my submission, that I filed a 10 million seat against some people in the High Court. So I don't want to comment further. Thank you very much. For them saying they would like me or not, that is their right. They can say it. But I'm not going to comment on the basis for what they did. Now, did you say you filed against these groups? And as I you mentioned a particular name that you have sealed. I mean, a, a, a news... Uh, Honourable Member, I think you said you, I made a disparaging statement against Nordness. And that is a video that was separated, which is fake. And for that matter, I filed a suit against three and, uh, people. Is it? No, I filed a suit. Maybe you were not here. I said I filed a suit, 10 million suit, against militant publication, publishers of the Insight newspaper, the acting editor, Mr. Kufo, of the Insight newspaper, and one Nin Tete Tete, who claims to be the chief executive officer of Strategic Thinkers Network, Strandek. And once the staff filed the suit, and the case has been being called once, I don't want to comment any further. Mr. Chairman, with all apologies, I don't want to deliberate on this issue again. Because Very well. We have that. already said so earlier, but let's be clear about this. The rule is that you don't comment in a way as to prejudice the parties. So if a question is asked and I think that it will prejudice, I will disallow it. However, the point is well made. I was going to make a comment on that, but... I didn't know that the matter was subject to case. Since you told me, I restrained myself, so. Uh, that's Sorry. Members will allow the chairman to be in charge so that he can rule out a member. But when you are asking questions and members are just throwing at you, I mean, it's a small, it's not I, I, I ignore all the asides, so let's work with <laughs> Honorable Patricia Peje, yes. Right, thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. Uh, Congress Minister for our region, we are very proud of you. I've worked with you, and I know your capabilities. But um, going through your handing over notes, I noticed at the appendices attached to the handing over notes that uh, the decentralized uh, stroke D concentrated departments, you still have town and country planning as one of the departments within the, and uh, I've been wondering what happened to the passage of Act 925, which uh, made LASPA the authority for that day. So I want you to state over here, it might be an oversight and it must be corrected, but what I want to get from you is that how have you implemented that act within the, in the region? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable member, it's a mistake and we have to correct it because we have the land use and special planning authority to please see the town and country planning. So it was an error on our part. Yes, uh, we are implementing them. Already we have the committees in place. Um, I directed during my first term all the MMDAs to submit their plans to the authority, the regional head of the authority. She is done with some of them, but it's not completed all. Again, I have instructed all the MMDAs not to issue even temporary permit to people in road reservations because they create a lot of problems. With these, if we implement them well, 
after the Land Use and Special Planning Authority has approved of the various laying out, I think it will help us and reduce some of the problems associated with planning within the communities in the Ashanti region. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. My next question um, lies with the industrialization, the follow up of uh, the industrialization program that you have for Ashanti. Uh, I have observed that in most of the market in Ashanti region, especially in Kumasi, these markets are occupied by manufacturers of shoes. And if you have three acre, uh, 3,000 acres of land at Ajoso, will you assure us, especially my constituents, uh, who have so many, over 3,000 shoemakers residing in our market, around who have been bedeviled with a lot of floods uh, spoiling their words, Will you assure us that you can work with the Ministry of Trade and get a, a site for us to reconstruct the uh, shoe factory that we have missed within our community? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, your MC, with your support, wrote to me that uh, you need a place where you send all the footwear producers to. Even there was a request that uh, we hand over the former shoe factory to them so that they could use that to We sent the letter to the Ministry of Trade and Industries. We've not received the response because a uh, part was leased out to a company that was manufacturing, a check company that was manufacturing footwear for the security services, which, which wasn't sustainable. The, the company more or less has collapsed. So we are still looking at possible places where we can get for them. Uh, but for now, we will follow up on the use of the former or the old shoe factory premises whilst we look for a permanent place for them. But with the approval of the Minister for Trade and Industry. Before then, to, I think we are aware we moved some people from the central market to the BT area. All of them are footwear producers. So we are looking at it in its entirety. If we can get a common place where all of them were sending and produce the footwear. Thank you very much. And my final question. Um, having gone wrong at the assumption of school by a, the basic school as a people. I observed that in Ashanti region, in my constituency in particular, there were some schools that had a population of about 100 students in the class. Um, with the pandemic in mind, would you recommend to GES to, uh, what would you recommend to GES, the, uh, GES to ensure safe, safe and healthy environment for learning in our educational system. Thank you. Right, thank you very much. Uh, on, the, on reopening of the schools, I went round with the regional director, down at Christian Service. There were some few schools where we realized that the, the people were mainly for a single classroom. They, so they arranged for temporary places for them, such that they could do the social distancing. They could observe social distancing protocols. These other schools we are talking about, I will inform the regional director to give me any school for which a classroom takes more than 35, 40 people, so that we can work on them and submit request to Ministry of Education. Because they, they've done a lot for us. To have 424 educational infrastructure in basic schools in four years is not small. And to have 378 in the senior high schools, I think is a great achievement. 
They will look at the rest and also submit the request to the Ministry of Education. Thank you very much. Honorable Samuel Ablaka. Honorable Ablaka. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. My question to the Honorable Nominee relates to the Phase 2 project of the KJTR Redevelopment Project. I note that uh, President Mahama initiated Phase 1, and uh, on the 2nd of May 2019, President Nana Dodanko and uh, for two, four, thirty two, the second jointly cut the sword for phase two. But reading up on the project, it appears that it has stopped. And the contractors have stated publicly that uh, congestion and uh, the, the residents around the, in, the, in the way of the project are refusing to give way. And the project might even delay. Uh, two years beyond the uh, project completion cycle. And this is quite an expensive project. I, I, I read that it costs about 258 million euros. And uh, it's a facility that this house approved. And uh, one would have thought that the project would be completed in good time so that uh, the project can begin to pay for itself. As regional minister, uh, I'm sure these facts are known to you. And uh, what are you doing to expedite work on the phase two uh, KJTR redevelopment project, which uh, is of concern to many people in that enclave? Thank you very much, honorable member. Honorable member, uh, the project has not stalled and the contractor is on site. The pace of work is a bit slow because uh, most of the prefabricated parts which they should have brought from UK delayed because of the COVID. Fortunately, most of them have arrived. What they are requesting for now is additional space. You know, where we relocated the people, the previous initial, is not the complete land space that they require. So they need additional space, which I've issued press release, I made this earlier, that they should relocate to a Vinci market, or Nanafia could be the second market, and this course, we've shown them, latest by 7th of this month, so that the contractor will have access to additional land, which they can speed up with the process. Even after this relocation, there will be another relocation until they get the final space for construction of phase two. You know, initially uh, we had problems too because of movement from the central market to uh, KGTR. Then when we resolved that one, another movement. You know, as human being as we are, people resist. When there's changes, we have people who resist. But fortunately, we've been able to talk to them and we've agreed to move. My second question is on a viral video which uh, made around last week. At least I saw it last week. A, a, a heart wrenching video, very disheartening. Pregnant women who have uh, delivered newborn babies. They and their babies were on the floor at the, gov the Mencia Government Hospital. Uh, it, it did break a lot of hearts. And uh, I want to find out from you as regional minister, if you saw that video and uh, what you assure this committee you will do if given the nod uh, to uh, change the fortunes of the Mencia Government Hospital to uh, uh, tackle this matter because it's, it's, it's really troubling. 
All right, thank you very much. Actually, I have not seen that video. But somebody informed me. I went to the hospital. So the head of the hospital said they are going to investigate and get back to me. Because when I went, they had also not seen the video. So uh, I'm sure they will submit the report to me maybe during this week. When, when, when I get the content of the report, I will know the necessary steps to take to remedy the situation. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm sure that uh, uh, when we are done, I can share the video with you uh, on your way out. Um, Thank you very since, much. I'll be very since, grateful. Since you are a friend of parliament. Uh, my final question will be on you and the churches in the Ashanti region. I have seen a lot of uh, publications about you seemingly fighting the church. Uh, on the 25th of November 2017, Graphic Online reports that you stormed the Bethel, House of Bethel Ministry. They were conducting an all-night service, and you, the report says you caused the arrest of the pastor, that they were making too much noise. I also have another publication here on the 28th of November, 2018. Noisy churches to be disconnected from electricity supply. Honorable Simon or Sir Mensa, what do you have against the church in the Ashanti region and why all these Gestapo arrests and uh, threats of disconnecting electricity and all of that? Is exactly what is going on. Are you at war with the Christian churches in the Ashanti region? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Member, I'm somebody who is free with all the various things. And I will not do something against maybe a particular church or something. What happened was, it was around midnight. My house is just opposite the church, and the noise was too much. <laughs> so I went there and told them that, no, it's late. Can you bring down the volume of, the, of, of, of your system? When I left, uh, now, worse. Now, because of the prayers, he's evil, he cannot sleep. Oh, yes. Now, the prayers, because of the prayers, he can't sleep. Let's shout, let's shout. Then they increase it. So, I came out. It was even risky for me. So, I drove out of my house, went to a Egypt police station, and reported. And when they brought machines, with an environmental officer to check the, the noise, uh, the level of the noise, and they realized they had breached the law. So they arrested them and seized some of the uh, equipment. I didn't seize them. I used the right channel to do it. And after that, uh, Honorable Chairman, if you permit me, I'll read a letter, the solicitors of the pastor wrote me to apologize to you, if you so permit. If you have it, you may read it. Yeah. Also, a free chambers, barristers, and solicitors. Address to Honorable Simon Osemens, Ashanti Regional Minister, Kumasi Ashanti. Dear sir, incident at House of Better Ministry, Amomasu Kumasi. Letter of apology. I write a solicitor for and on behalf of my friend, Reverend Kwame Chachi of House of Better Ministry Church, Amomaso Kumasi. I have been instructed by my client to write to sincerely apologize to you on the incident that happened or occurred at the House of Better Ministry Church, Amomaso Kumasi, on 25th November 2017 at about 1 a.m. He added midnight, that is in the morning. 1 a.m. midnight. My client unreservedly apologized for his conduct as well as that of members of his congregation who, out of ignorance or na naivety, resisted 
and showed insubordination towards you. In your legitimate desire to ensure that noise level is reduced to the barest minimum at Angomasu community and the region as a whole. We hope that in the spirit of good neighborliness, you accept this apology in good faith and we promise that such incident will never occur again. God bless you. Signed, Kwame MP, a free SQ of Usuwe Free Chambers, Barristers and Solicitors, Edum Kumasi. Mr. Chairman, uh, that is well noted. The second part of my question is the, the, the electricity. Y your mic, your mic is on. Yes, I'm the saying second that, part of my question. Uh, uh, no, hold on, please. Okay, sure. Now you may table, well, having read it, you table it for a record. So please, the clerk will come for it. Please, I have a follow up. So, flowing from your answer, you can say that you are not against churches in the Ashanti region. Neither are you against Christianity in the Ashanti region. Yes, please. As I said, we have respect for all faiths, including Christianity. Even since being the regional minister for four years, every quarter, I have the Christian community come to the regional coordinating council to organize church service with me from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every quarter for the whole four years. Thank you very much. But in fact, you have nothing against them. I'm friends of them. Um, it, it, it will be interesting to know the noise levels when they come to you for that uh, uh, quarterly uh, and, uh, church services at 7 to 9 a.m. Uh, but the second part of my question, to refresh your memory, uh, it's the publication I read, a threat you, or a notice you put out, that you will disconnect the electricity of uh, noisy churches. Did you really say that? Is that a, is some kind of a, a, a fiat? And how do you intend to implement this, your interesting policy? That is pure fake news. It's not true. I have no knowledge about it. I have never said this in the way. Thank you very much. All right. Honorable John Kuma. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Congratulations to the Honorable Minister. You look very handsome in your kente. My question has to do with the dusty nature of rules in Kumasi especially the Atonsu Agogo towards Bosontri areas. And then also the spate of abandoned roads by road contractors in the region. I don't remember the Atonsu Agogo towards Bosontri. Is that part of Kumasi? It's part of Ashanti region. You said Kumasi roads. Oh, but okay. Kumasi ends at that junction. From that going is Bosom. I thought it was part of Greater Kumasi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That part is Bosom Tree. So it will be Kumasi and Greater Kumasi areas. And um, uh, the, the, the rate at which contractors, road contractors, abandon projects in the region. And then, please, I want you to finally add the heavy traffic on our roads in, in Kumasi in particular, central Kumasi. I'm talking about the Tech Road, Swami so Runabout, Buakwa to Tanosu areas. And then lately from Santasi to Anyangkwanta, what is accounting for this inconvenience for Kumasi residents? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Chairman, Yes, it's true. Uh, some of the roads under construction are dusty because we are in the dry season. Once a while, some few of the contractors try to water the road. But you know, after some few hours, we still have the dust. But what I've discussed with the rural sector players 
is that why can't they use the strategy used by the Chinese? Let me give you two examples. From Ahinsai Brewery to Dumpasi Junction, where Chico is constructing. Chico has left the old road and doing the site. So when they finish asphalting that site, they will divert the vehicle onto that site. So now, when it rains, you don't have problem. When it's dry, you don't have problem. But most of the Ghanaian contractors, what I've seen is that they will grade about 10 kilometers. How can you water 10 kilometers? So they will do little, the next time you have the road and the dust again. The same thing applies to uh, China Jew who are doing the extension of the Sufu line interchange to Abuapa. If you realize, now they've almost completed in front of Yasantua. So I'm sure after asphalting, they will ask them to leave the road, that, uh, old road, even though you have potholes, but you don't experience the dust. But Honorable the... Minister, you're asking us why. We should oh. be asking you. No, no, it is why rhetoric. Aren't you, why aren't you discussing this with the supervisors, the engineers? It, on our channel, that's why I said I've discussed with the rural sector people that they should find out why they cannot do this. But the why I ask is rhetoric. It's not to you, Honorable Chairman, or members of the committee. They're just rhetoric statement. Thank you very much. So I'm sure if they can do it that way, we will not be experiencing this dust problem we have almost every day. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, October 2021 will mark the 100th year anniversary since the passing on of Obahimaya Santua in the Seychelles Island. Some women pressure groups are lobbying and advocating that the Kumasi International Airport be named after her in, her, in, in memory of her, in honor of her memory. Please, what's your take on this matter? Thank you very much. I don't have the capacity to say yes or no. I'll discuss with the appropriate authorities and whatever they tell me, I'll let the people know. Thank you very much. Very well. Honorable Eric Kupoku. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Honorable nominees, congratulations. The Ashanti Regional Coordinator for Girl Child Education on 21st of January 2021 made some startling revelations about some developments in Ashanti region. And I would like to draw your attention to that so that we can see how we'll be able to resolve it. According to her, Ashanti region recorded the highest cases of teenage pregnancy in 2019. But he said 2018, 2019. And the fear is that with COVID and the associated restrictions, the shutting down of schools in 2020, they expect the numbers to even go up. But when you look at the breakdown of where these cases were recorded, you will be worried. At the upper primaries, upper primaries, primary four, primary five, primary six, 128 cases were recorded. Junior high schools, 783 cases were recorded. Senior high schools, 310 cases were recorded, giving us a total of 1,221 cases of teenage pregnancy in Ashanti region alone. Honorable Minister, this is an unfortunate development, but it is emergent. So how do you propose to deal with a situation like this in Ashanti? Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Chairman, I will sit before this August committee and pretend as if I know everything. I'm receiving this information for the first time 
So I'll do my best to investigate and then find solutions to the problem. Thank you very much. My second question has to do with the Akuma Dan irrigation project for tomato farmers. You know, Ghana imports, uh, spends about, Ghana spends about $100 million on the importation of tomatoes from Burkina Faso. And to be able to address this situation, we initiated the Akuma Dan irrigation project. The phase one of the irrigation project was completed in 2016, and the second phase was to take off in 2017. Can you update us as to the status of that project? Thank you very much. Yes, it's true. Uh, the first phase was completed. The second phase has been started, but there are some slight problems, which I know the then Deputy Minister for Local Government, Honorable Collins, in team, who happens to be the Member of Parliament there, work on it seriously, but have not been there for the past maybe one year. So it will be difficult for me to see exactly the status of it, and I will have to admit, it will be difficult for me to see exactly the status now. Now, my last question, honorable nominee. Earlier on, the minority leader posed a question to you on the KJTR uh, stores, I mean the KJTR project. But I'm looking at it from a different perspective. My perspective is that uh, the KMA rented out the stores to the traders, and uh, the traders were made to pay advance covering the period of five years, which is in contravention with the Rent Act of this country. As the regional minister, you represent the president, the chief executive of this country. And that office imposes on you strict immutable obligation to enforce the law, to enforce the law. Is it not the case that looking at what KMA did, it's like the KMA, your office, and for that matter, the government, is not respecting the laws of this country by charging advance more than what is provided for in the law, and thereby imposing untold hardships on the traders in Kumase. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Member, then we may have to look at the agreement again. The monies were supposed to pay and to be used for amortization of the loan. So maybe we'll look at the agreement again. We'll look at it. Other than that, we cannot amortize the loan. So I'll look at the agreement again and see if there's a need maybe to come back to the house. we do that. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Simon. Congratulations on your nomination. Um, you've been regional minister for the past four years, I think. And so you definitely were at post during the fight against illegal mining and Galamse, and etc. Um, sometimes the people get flushed out of the mining site. But before then, a lot of degradation of the land take place, where vast areas of forest cover is taken out, and you can just see miles and miles of you know, degraded lands left and the chemicals used to pollute the water bodies around there. I'm talking about Tontochrome, Dunkwa area, and etc. What, given your commitment to environmental issues, since you've started making life impossible for 
churches around Kumasi. <laughs> the bigger environmental problems in the region. How are you dealing with those ones? All right, thank you very much. You are right. Uh, the issue of environmental degradation as a result of the operations of Galamseas has been a major issue. But I know last year, the Ministry for Lands and Natural Resources started a pilot project where they gave some few contracts to some people to start covering the pit and see how we can reclaim the land. Uh, they finished with the pilot project, but I cannot say strictly that maybe they are going to rule it out or they will not rule it out. But we will request them, if I'm giving the nod, to extend the project to other areas. Even if we cannot plant vegetables and other things, we can do forestation there. We can plant trees and other things which are not edible in case maybe you have some of these cyanide and other things being there. But we can plant trees to maybe reclaim the land. So I will discuss with them if they can rule out the pilot that they started last year. Thank you very much. You know, as regional minister heading the regional security committee, as the council of committee, Rexec. Yeah, and then you have all these dist municipal and district, and then in your case, metropolitan uh, mayors and chief executives under you. What really is the challenge in terms of fighting Galamse? Is it that the Galamseers are able to overpower the law enforcement agencies in the various districts? Uh, you don't see the huge excavators and graders ravaging the forest so that you know it's not visible and this police force in the municipality or district cannot stop that from what is what is really the underlying issues that is making it impossible for us to win this this fight against um, illegal mining can we make all the mining activities legal thank you very much uh, the illegality with the mining, I will say, are truthful. Those who don't have mining license, that the Galamsey people going to mine, whichever form, that one is totally illegal. You can also have some who have proper mining license, and then they lease part to Galamseas to do galaxy. You know, the, whole, the most difficult aspect is those who have legal mining license, who tend to do the galaxy. If you not take care, because they will produce their license, you might think what they are doing is right. But if you go down, you realize that no, they are breaching some of the provisions in the use of the license or for which the license was given. But those who don't have any license at all, dealing with them is a bit easier. You can send the military there, the police there, just to arrest them. And sometimes, uh, I won't say confiscate, but impound their equipment. But it's like drug marketing. You touch it here, they go to the other side and hide there and start doing their illegal activity. All that I will say is that all of us as a nation, even though some successes have been made, I won't say it's a total failure, no. Some successes have been made. But we need to do more to stop these illegal miners. And we should let them understand that the government policy is not to stop mining, but the government policy is to stop indiscriminate mining, irresponsible mining that affects the environment negatively. That spoils our water bodies, that spoils our vegetative cover, putting some substances in the soil which are not good for our health, etc. 
So to me, we need to do more. My proposal, if I'm giving the nod one, is the institutions, for instance, maybe Operation Vanguard, uh, or Galamso. These people, when they are coming to the region, must be put under the regional minister, who is the chairman of the regional security council, instead of they being controlled from the top. Maybe if we do that, and the relationship between those at the ministry level and at the regional coordinating council is stronger, definitely you can use the security down there when the need arises to arrest these people or solve the problem. But sometimes you have to go through maybe the, those gallant stock people and other things before you can do the work because you don't have direct authority over them. And sometimes you don't want conflict of functions. So you try to avoid and use that one. But I think if they put them under the regional ministers, the regional ministers will have the capacity to control them. And when need be, they can, they can propose some remedial measures so that uh, we can fight that thing. We all of us will have to fight it. I will never say that we don't have to fight it. We have to fight this canker. It's bad. It's not good for this country. Thank you very much. The same, I'll, I'll exhaust all my questions on that subject matter. Um, you are the regional minister, or you are the regional minister. There's, I believe, a military, I don't know what it's a battalion. What's the size of the military in Kumasi? I don't know the size no, of the military in Kumasi. Sorry, right? no. You mean you should disclose the size of the military? No, no, no. I'm saying that, I mean, it's not, if you check the records, okay. you see. But um, we have the military. Please ask another question. In, yes, the same question. You have the military in Kumasi. You have a huge police force in Kumasi. As the regional security uh, committee chair and head and political head, have you requested the army and the police to specifically go and flash out Galapse activities anywhere in your region and they have refused? Or why would you wait till Accra sends soldiers to come and then flash them out that you would want them to operate under you when they come to the region? What is your own track record in, in, in stopping Galamsey activities in your own region? Thank you very much. Uh, once again, let me extend my appreciation and gratitude to the military command within the region, both the GOC, that's the general officer commanding the central command, and then the 4BM commander. They've been of enormous help to me. There's not a single time I've requested them to do something and they have refused. If I see then I'm not being grateful. In the time I talk to them, they help me. I don't have a single time I say, oh, you see, I want this or I want that. Where they think the action I want them to take is above them, then they will ask me to inform the Minister for Defense to discuss with their military high command, but they've never refused any request from me. I don't remember. Thank you. The own track record in fighting. Honorable, you are no, you're done. done. No, it is part of the question. What was he probably just forgot. Ask him about, he spoke, spoke about the military coming in, and when they come in, they should operate under the regional minister. So I said, but you are the regional minister, and you have a battalion there, you have the police force there. Have you requested their assistance and they have refused? And what is your own track record on the ground in fighting uh, Galamse instead of waiting for the president to send an operation from, from Accra? So his own track record is what I want to hear. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think I've told you several times I've requested the military to go and arrest people, and they arrest them. It's even true. If you have, for instance, the gallant stock there, and they go to a particular uh, site and arrest the people, they don't bring the equipment to me. They would rather take the equipment to where we have the gallant stock. They won't bring it to me. Because I, don't, I cannot control those equipment, and I would not like them to take them also to the barracks. But where we are supposed to keep them, that is where they will keep them to. But, but my preoccupation the question, is that the they question, should arrest them. Yeah, the question really is, we've seen your track record in stopping noise pollution. 
<laughs> so what is your track record in stopping Galamse activities? That's, that's the point. We have, we have your track record in noise pollution. How successful have you been in your fight against it? My brother, uh, we've arrested some people around to Dukrum. We've arrested some people uh, in the other forests and other areas. To, to me, the little that we can, we've done it. But the problem is still there. And we have to solve it to the latter. So my preoccupation is how we look at the structure that we will not have conflicting positions and deal with the issue as it is. But in general, it's, the success is high. It's not as bad as we used to have. I know successive governments have tried. You understand it? There is not a fight you can win overnight. So as we move along, like every system, you see your, your strong, strong side, you see your weaknesses, and if you are able to solve some of the weaknesses, you improve upon it. And I know we are going to improve upon it. Thank you very much. Leadership. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, earlier when the nominee was answering questions with regards to rules, he used phrases like, I have to look at it, my preoccupation, I will give a lot of concentration. I just want to find out from you, what is his role in the rules construction within the region? Thank you very much. Uh, when, I took, when I became the regional minister, the first thing I did was to look at the rules in general and identify the very bad ones and then prioritize them. I lobby from the Ministry of Rules and Highways to ensure that those reports that other feeder rules, urban rules, and then highways sent to the ministry, I follow them up, up to the point that they are approved and make sure that they are awarded. Uh, some of them are awarded at the ministry level. The others that are awarded at the uh, metropolitan level and others awarded at the regional coordinating council level. So those that are awarded at the regional court meeting council. You know we have an ent entity tender committee. They will handle it and make sure that the award will, will go through if their documents are right. But, so that is my main rule. And after that, I have to monitor to make sure that the contractor is doing the work continuously. So Mr. Chairman, so one can say that, or if one says that you are on top of the road construction in the region, to a extent that you know almost all the rules that have been done, their stages, who the contractors are, the challenges, and how they are awarded and all that. Will that be right? Uh, at a point, I will know the status of each of them at a point, but not always, because as, as I said earlier, 189 contracts have been awarded. So if I sit here and see that at any given time, I know the status of all the 189 rules, then I'm, being, I'm not being truthful. But maybe at a, at a particular time, I know A, B, at next time I know Z, but not all of them at the same time. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, I just want to find out from him. There's a very important road in my constituency that was started in 2015. Why did this stop? Why was the contract terminated? You know, uh, I now have the list of rules that have stopped. Some of them, the contractors did not have the adequate capacity to work on the rules. And you know, now rules are not pre-financed. The contracts are not pre-financed. You have to work and then you raise certificates. Some of them, they come short time, they run out of funds. And you know, if you work less than 2%, you cannot even raise the certificate. Some of them, the consultants go to site and realize that this one, you can't read the certificate and it becomes a problem for them. So they, they vary. There's a 14 room man, we invited him once. He said he was going to go back to site. He's not gone back. The list we've received, we are going to meet all the contractors. 
and those we think cannot perform, we have to terminate, request for the termination of those contracts and reaward them to other people. Even though it will delay, but it will be better we get somebody with the capacity to deliver than have somebody on the road for years who cannot deliver. This particular road was awarded almost 70% of the drains done and the contract was terminated in 2019. Why has it delayed to now that is not being reawarded for completion. You know, honorable, honorable member, you realize we could do very little in 2020. You see, uh, it was March that we had this problem with COVID. And even we as a region, we are part of the lockdown. So there are several things that the COVID affected. No, but 2019 was there. 2019, Come. nothing happened in 2019. Come. No, but point, you know, you know very well. I think you, you are a guru in project management. You know that when you terminate a contract, you have to re advertise and go through the procurement process again. So it's not like maybe I terminate a service project today and I guess tomorrow I re award it to Honorable Bujaka. I can't do that. You have to still go through the procurement process. It's like you are starting the whole process afresh. So, so is, it, is it the same that you say the reason for the Ascormon Pond, Sevilla, uh, Kenton Chrono Link, that was also awarded and terminated, and up to now, they are from Ascormon Pond, where the municipal assembly is. You know, there's this road. It's supposed to have been part of the Pencil Factory Road. That's supposed to go through as a government pond around the chief's palace behind there. It goes into Kenton Corner. In fact, for that one, I think only the covers were done and it was terminated. And up to date, nothing has been done. Is it also the same challenges? I'm not seeing that road very well, but I know that road network in those areas, most of them have been fixed. And even if you come to Kenton Corner, the 55 million euro facility that parliament you approved. Kenton uh, Kolu area is part. And I know the contractor is working on some of the rooms there. So I don't know the specific one you, you are talking about. But I'm just talking about the Ascormon Pong area. Yes. But let me just ask the 189 roads projects that you said happen in the region. Yes. And you know Ascormon Pong municipal is one of your municipalities under you. How many of them do you, you know that had happened within the Ascormon Pond Municipal? Uh, around, even around the affordable housing area, we've tied those areas. And then, where? As a Korean Pond. And the affordable housing area, we've tied those areas. And then, those were tied before 2016. No, some other areas have been tied. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Aija. Uh, Aija is not part of Ascormon Pond Municipal. That's where Dr. Mafo is. Then you unravel, I will check. <laughs> so that's the chairman. Right, it's check. interesting to know that not one project was done in Ascommon for Municipal. And I hope that you take note that in this second phase, if given the nod, you pay attention for equity. All right. Thank you. Well noted, honorable member. The chairman, he, there was a publication that were, and the video too was there, I mean, an interview you granted, that you said, the overhyped NDC credit share market project is a complete waste. Is that what you really meant? Yes. Yes, I did see that credit share project is very nice, but it created a lot of problems for us, and that is the, the, the bare truth. You see, KGT the function of KGTR was to serve as a lorry terminal to support central markets. But we changed the function as a lorry terminal to a, to a market to shops. The records available indicate that in 2015, before the commencement of the project, Vehicles that were parking at that place were more than 1,000. 
but the project has provided for only 108 maximum parking space. So with this, once you change the function and you did not create an alternative avenue to cater for the original function that was being played by KGTR, you create a lot of dislocation. So let's assume from 2015, there's no additional commercial vehicles. It means you've thrown 900 vehicles outside there. That is why every runabout you see in Kumasi now has been turned to a lorry park. That is why we cannot decongest the central business district area. So I said, yes, outwardly is fine. Let's create a problem. One, if there was no increase in the number of vehicles, even the 900, where do they park? Because this type of project, what, to the best of my knowledge, if you want to do something like this, where at every station, you create 54 stations, where on maximum two vehicles can park, which is given as one minute, you create what we call a holding bay. A holding bay. So that when the commercial vehicle comes and it offloads, it drives to the holding bay and waits. That is an example that VIP has done. You see, VIP hasn't got enough space for all their buses to park. And as a result of that, getting to a binti, they bought land there with their using as holding bay. So when you come and the passengers alight, you drive and go and park at the holding bay. When it's your time, then they will call you to come. So when you go to VIP now, always maximum two vehicles are, that you can find. The one loading and that one that is bringing passengers. But this one, we, we reduce the number of parking spaces and did not create a holding bay. So in the second phase, we needed to do some changes. So a whole floor in the second phase will be used as vehicle parking spaces. And again, the congestion we have there, you know these traders, 30 traders, we did not provide sufficient traditional type of trading system in the, in the first phase, where you need maybe table talk for so many people. So, Honorable, yes, I said it, and this is the context in which I said, and I said there's no parking space for the commercial vehicles that were thrown out. There's no parking space for shoppers. There's no parking space for shop owners. So, Mr. Chairman, first, I'd want to find out from him that data that he said, that about 1,000 vehicles were parked at Kedetia. Where is your source? That is a report that I have at the, uh, at the coordinating council. So if you want me to provide, maybe you provide later. Thank you. So you provide, you provide those, uh, the, the source? Because I attended Central International up there. So I, I was daily going through Kedetia. And all of us who born and bred in Kumasi will say there has never been a time where around Kenya is without traffic for the past 40 or so years. I mean, when it, it was just a runabout, sometimes you can spend more than an hour just to go around the, the runabout, and you, you know that. And you think that just because, in your view, sufficient car parking has not been provided, it makes the whole project a waste. You think that is fair to describe that project as a waste? No, I never said it's wasteful. I said it's a beautiful project, but pregnant with some problems. That's what I said. No, the, it, it was whoever a, it, will write the, the way the person The overhyped Kedicia market project is a complete waste. And the video is there. Uh, Unless we want to say that that's, no. that's not the true meaning that you want to give, but that's what you said. All right, what I said is the project is very beautiful, but there are a lot of problems associated with it. It's beautiful when you see it. You said and, these, it and these were the things I said. You said it was beautiful outside, but inside it is dirty. That was the word you used. Mr. Chair, you didn't want to create that impression, in other words. You only want to clarify that you were not creating that impression. You were not creating that. No, impression. I was not creating that. That's right. That's right. And you also know that the credit here was just phase one. 
and you admit that the phase two is coming. And you have also admitted that in the phase two, there will be more parking space to be able to accommodate as much as possible. You think that the car parking space in the phase two will be sufficient to take all the traffic around the place? No, it won't. But it will reduce it. Phase three might be able to do that. So you agree that, after all, the project is not a waste? I have not said that. This is your word. My word, I have never said it's a waste. You, so you said it was not well thought through. Is that also something that you, 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 you agree to repeat that this project has not been well thought through? Honorable member, I think I've said several times that the project is a beautiful one, but it has come with a number of problems. But how somebody works it, that one, I cannot fault the person. But this is what I'm saying. The gentleman, earlier when he was answering the question where he said, uh, I just want to, for the avoidance of that, you said that you never made any derogatory statement about naughtiness. I've never in my life. And uh, you said the matter has been filed in court. Yes, sir. When was this done? Um, that was last year, September. And how far has the case gone? No, what I've said is that the case has been called once. So it's still at the court. Mr. Chairman, I want to find out from the regional minister then why he did order the seizures of Eston Kobe Group Limited Equipment. Thank you very much. I was doing my work as the chairman of the Regional Security Council under the Intelligence and Security Act at 526. I received a report that some Irish youth at Mirehim wanted to go and burn equipment of a contractor. When I heard it, I called the regional police commander that they should impound the equipment and let us, let us find out what the whole thing is about instead of allowing them to bend the equipment. So that was done. They even brought the equipment to Ninahini Police Station. And if you are aware, Ninahini Police Station is just by the major road. So I went there. And I saw these heavy trucks had been parked along the road, which also posed another risk. And I realized that the Irish youth were still not satisfied. So I requested that all those equipment be moved from Minahini to Nkawe, which is under a different jurisdiction. So when that was done, then I requested that they told me the people were going to mine bauxite, and they had all the documents. So I said, then I want the documents. And when I get the documents and I'm satisfied, we can allow them to go and then talk to the youth. Because there was a security risk. And as part of my responsibility as the chairman of RESET, I need to solve the problem. And that is what I did as chairman of the Regional Security Council. Chairman, so why was it difficult for you to release the equipment after the court ordered the release to their owners? You see, I heard the order on air, but I had not received any documents. So I said, when I get the documents from the court, the equipment will be released. And when they brought the documents, I reported to the minister, and he decided that we should release them. But I don't take verbal statement in such a situation. It would have been very risky. So when they gave me a copy of the order from the court, then we released the equipment. Yeah, I, I perfectly agree with you. You can't take, you cannot just a news item and act on based on the news item. But did you make effort to get the court to serve you with the necessary documentation? 
What I did was I called the then Deputy Attorney General. Now, if he has a copy of the court order, he should send it to me, and he sent the copy to me. And when I received it, I informed the Minister for Finance. And, and that took three weeks. You see, honorable, to me, to me, to be sincere to you, and if we look at this issue objectively, I see the complaint. I'm saying if you look at this issue objectively, I saved a thing could be created. Because if the average youth had been the equipment, that was it going to get them back. So in reality, I rather saved the equipment. I was just looking at the duration between the court ordering you to get release the equipment and the time that you got it. And I said it took more than three weeks. And I thought that you thought that was a reasonable time for you to get the document and get it released? I would say it's reasonable time because, you know, I have to get in touch with the, the, the attorney general and not by word of mouth. I wrote. I wrote to them okay. and they responded with a copy attached. And it was on that basis I informed the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources. So it wasn't like telephone conversation because the team that issue has reached a stage where I didn't need to do on verbal issues. I needed something for which tomorrow I can attest to. Thank you. Mr. Yes, Chairman, earlier you was asked about the town and country planning and the way in Kumasi in particular, the nature of the metropolis, almost all reserve lands for hospital, for recreational, for schools, have been encroached left right center and sometimes with all the security challenges that it comes. Have you heard of the bobine land issue? Yes, it has come to me. Some of the residents have petitioned. When was the first time you heard about this uh, complaint from the community? When was the first time you heard about this bobine land and the complaint that it was generating? Uh, the first time was on radio. Come again? The first time was on radio when they said uh, there was looming crisis at the place over the land. Who owns the land? Then the second time, you also reported to me. Even you wrote. Actually, it was not directly. I got information copy. So you also wrote to me. Then the residents have also petitioned here. I've asked the government representative at Asokori Mampo Municipal to hold on and that the regional coordinating council is going to take over the case. I think I've spoken with you, you've given me all the necessary information and even promised me that beside what you wrote, you give me additional documents so that it will help us. I've spoken with the landlords, they've also brought me documents. So we will form a small committee and look into the case. I've written to the lands officer. He's also brought me the, land, the, the, the site plan and then giving me who owns the place. So it's going to help us to resolve the problem. Has, have you at any time requested this document, 2018, 2019, from the assembly that they should bring before you to study on this particular land? Uh, no, I invited him to my office to brief me. That was just verbal. When I said I heard that there was looming crisis at the place. But this is the first time I've requested for actual document. After so, some landlords, they, I think they were three, they came to my office. Yeah, the landlord association. Yeah, they came to my office. Then I told them they should go and give me. But there has never been a time where these documents of this land were in your possession. I, I don't remember very well, apart from your letter that you wrote. I don't remember. Now, the reason I'm asking is that, yes, it is, but it is a security issue as a regional minister. We've spoken at, at length about it, but the challenge is that at the point that, that the U.S. seized with the documents, and that was 2018-19, and that you were studying it until you are done, everything should be held in abeyance. Uh, Honorable, we know that letter, you gave me information copy. It was not directed. This one was just uh, 2021. 
The one that I, I did was just 2021. No, there's an earlier one. Maybe you've forgotten. You wrote to. You wrote to certain department and you gave me a copy. That was that was 2020. Yes. Yes. So you are giving us assurance that you do whatever it takes to ensure that the right thing is done and then peace prevail in that community. Yes, I'll do that. Chairman, I want to refer the nominee to uh, the Land Use and Spatial Planning Act 2016, specifically section 93, 3 and 4. And these are done with a number of regional ministers. Because in 2016, this house decided that because of the rampant rezoning of public lands and other public reserve areas, if rezoning were going to be done, they have to come to this house for approval. But unfortunately, it looks like it's not been popularized. I just want to read that section for you. And the specific one, 933, a district special planning committee shall not grant a request for change of the existing zoning or land use unless the request as intended to make the zoning of the land comply with the structure plan or zoning scheme or the local plan. Four, without limiting subsection three, the change of use or rezoning of a public space shall be, it didn't even say me, it said shall be subjected to approval by parliament. A number of districts don't seem to be working with this. They continue to apply under the old regime where they just do the rezoning at their end and leave it at that. What will you do to draw the attention of your MMD is to comply fully with this section of the law? Thank you very much. I will send a circular to all of them and quote the relevant sections as you just quoted. Uh, fortunately, when I took over, I bought some of the laws which I found relevant for them in their operation, like the Land Use and Special Planning Authority Act, the Financial Administration Act, the Financial Regulation, uh, Audit Service Act, Procurement Law, all these ones are quite some from the state provision and distributed to all the MMDAs. Say that where they are in doubt, they can make reference. So I'll quote it and then send a separate to all of them. The chairman, the Atonsu Agogo Road, earlier it was asked, the contractor seemed to have abandoned the road. It's creating so much dust. It's affecting the hospital that is there, the schools around. And most importantly, asthmatic patients, simply because they are not even watering, which you know is part of the cost buildup. What are you going to do to ensure that even as they do the construction, they will control the dust so that the residents can live in harmony without, especially the asthmatic uh, patients? Right. Thank you very much. We've discussed this issue several times with the contractor. Uh, sometimes uh, they could financial issues. An honorable member, if, if you admit that now we are seeing the transition and with this period there's some sort of administrative inertia. There's some sort of administrative inertia because the transition act imposes some limitation in terms of financial obligations, equipment, etc. So all these people you see as, as president representative is not everything that they, they can do now, especially when it comes to financial issues. So maybe when the full complement of the government is formed, uh, most of these problems will be rectified. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Chairman, earlier he was asked about the number of pregnancies in Asante region. Pregnancies among teenagers and students, and you said you were hearing it for the first time, right? I cannot sit before this August committee and see that I know everything. But this one I'm hearing for the first time because I'm human. I can I don't want to say I know everything, it's impossible. So if I don't know, it's better I say I don't know and go and find out rather than just going to say something which might mean I'm deceiving the house, which is not good. 
Thank you. My worry is that because we are the chair of the Regional Coordinating Council, and almost all the heads of the regional agencies are on that committee, the Regional Coordinating the Council, and they report to you the activities under them within the region. So I was surprised that this hadn't come to your notice. Yes, you are right. You know, if you look at the membership of the Regional Coordinating Council, <clears throat> you have the presiding members of all the MMDs, the MMDCs, you have representative from the Regional House of Chiefs, then all the regional heads are members with that voting right. Yeah. Because Ashanti region, we have 43 MMPs, even the presiding members and the uh, MMDCs alone, that is 83. And when you add the yeah. regional head, it's over 100, it's adding to about 140 something. Because of this, we could not meet during the COVID period. Mm. We could not. You know, we, we are supposed to have at least two regional coordinating council meetings. But the COVID started somewhere middle of March 2020. And because of that, if I tell you regional coordinating council, we could meet it wasn't for, we did it. Because definitely we we're going to break the, the COVID protocol. protocol. Thank you. The chairman, last. Do you own a small scale mining license? I don't. And do you, do you, are you in partnership with any small scale mining company? No. Small scale? No. And have you ever aided any small scale mining company in its operation? No. Thank you, Mrs. Yes, Deputy Chairman. The nominee is in a, a tower of cultural significance. One was born in Iwo Kente, and I was told that my Kente had no name. I, well, I was at a loss. You are an Ashanti. Can you, because you didn't wear this just for the sake of it, can you tell us the meaning of this Kente? Uh, Speaker, at the presidential uh, inauguration where he Honorable absented himself. Leader, ignore anything that is not said in the mic. Mr. Mr. Chair, I will ignore them, but I've given him reason. Honorable Minister, kindly address me. Do you have the name of the cloth you're wearing? That's the question. All right, thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Member, a friend gave this kente to me. And he told me I should wear it. I'm sorry, I should wear it to the vetting. And the meaning is that the different shades you see means that I am regional minister for all. Thank you. This is this is very new. Uh, this is a very new design. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Chair. I often hear, I often hear Krobia Asante Kotoko. Krobia Asante Kotoko. Can you take this opportunity to explain what that means and its significance? I say in Sabrani Bisa, it's a Krobia Asante Kotoko. I'm When I have the truth was representative here, and uh, that is Nana Oyekohene. And then I have Berima, Safo, Chinibua Kudia, also here, Kumawihene. I don't want to take the risk and make the mistake. I'll console them and get the full meal. Thank you. You want him to enjoy that liberty? Very well. If you, you want him to enjoy that liberty of not explaining Krobia Asante Kotoko, that's fine. But, Honorable Nomni, um, the Regional Coordinating Council, you have an official residence. If you go to 
central region there is, one western region there is one. It's such a huge edifice. Uh, the one you have at Ashanti region, uh, are there plans of putting it in shape, renovating the place? And... Yeah, thank you. We've written to the finance minister. And so maybe after he's gone through his vetting and he, uh, if he's approved and the president's words in him, maybe you act upon it. Thank you. Then finally, Ashanti culture. Ashanti culture. You have a way you do it that everybody embraces it. Christian, Muslim, dignitaries from overseas and all that. How is it that for other people in Ghana, when they want to put out their culture, it is often seen as fetish. People don't engage. But you are able to proudly put yours out. Can you tell us how you've done that? How you do it? How you've made it an all-embracing all aspect of your, of, your, of your life? Thank you very much. First of all, I don't know and I will never see the culture of any group apart from Ashanti fetish. Well, I, I, I want to disassociate myself with that. Uh, I will not say that. The Ashanti region is slightly different from all the other regions. In that, with all the other regions, every parliament chief has his powers, has his territory and controls that portion. When you come to Ashanti, we all pay reverence to Otunufo, the king. So when Otunufo sits, everybody will obey whatever he sees. And it's a tradition, a tested tradition that has been there for years, more than 300 years. So it's even older than modern Ghana. And they see themselves as one because they use one common language. Apart from Ashanti region, all other regions you have different languages and you have different paramounties wielding different powers. That is why Ashanti we are able to do that because we all respect Otunfo. Uh, you have not talked about your festivals. You have not talked about your festivals in Ashanti region. Your festival. The Akwesidaya, can you enlighten us a bit? Okay. okay. You know, uh, during Akwesidaya, that is when all the chiefs, when all the chiefs and people of Ashanti go to pay reverence to Otunfo. And Akwesidaya has been there for a very long, long time. It's celebrated every 40 days, where Utunfo will sit in state for the various groups to go and pay allegiance to him. That is something that has been there, as I said, for centuries. And because we all respect Utunfo, it becomes difficult to break that tradition. And definitely, uh, we are going to continue with it because that is the symbol of the Ashanti. That is where you see the occupant of the golden stool sitting in state. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. Chairman, I intend to be brief since the Honorable Muntaka knows the Ashanti region better than I do and appreciates this problem better than I do. But uh, Minister Nominee, communities such as Yalwa, Yati Yati, Abu number one, number two, Asakori Mampong, and then Sabon Zongo, 
the youth are enthusiastic about soccer, soccer, football, yet they have no opportunity of training pitches for the purpose of exercising and equipping themselves with skills. Ashanti does have enormous opportunity of uh, training out footballers who can be legends. What plans do you have for the Ashanti youth gen in general, particularly in those areas that I have mentioned? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. Honorable Chair, now football is a business and we need to take it seriously. I will liaise with the Member of Parliament, Honorable Muntaka, and whoever becomes the Municipal Chief Executive, so that we will request either through the Ministry of Youth and Sport or other agencies for possibly constructing an astroturf in that area so that they can use it and develop their football tariffs. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. There is some worrying report from the Small Arms Commission on illegal arms in the possession of many young people in Ashanti, in particular Kumasi. That itself facilitates the commission of crime and that itself poses danger to peace. What do you intend to do about it? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I've had discussions with the Chair of the Small Arms Commission, Professor Reverend Pimpon Manson, and I've allocated an office at the Regional Coordinating Council to them to come and use it as temporary office, why we do for permanent office for them, so that we can work together and try to arrest this menace. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman, probably this is for, you can say, Minister for Youth and Sports. The grooming of young ones in the secondary school, Ashanti has a lot of those institutions. The inter-school games, the inter-school games itself used to produce a lot of excitement and produce potential youth even for the armed forces, for the Ghana police and the others. It seemed at the national level to have been run down, like no interest in it. What do you intend to do to ignite new enthusiasm in those areas and to get those activities organized in the region. Thank you very much. In fact, this question uh, should have been a question directed at the Minister for Youth and Sports. You know, Honorable, until even I, I became the Regional Minister, I had not taken time even to think about the Regional Coordinating Council. You coordinate activities of all the sector ministers and even including security service. So you cannot formulate policies on your own. We can make proposal to the sector ministry. And if... So what proposals will you have for the sector minister? The proposal I'll make is maybe we re-energizing what we used to have based in the schools, in the colleges, etc., uh, to, to come back on stream. And when that is done, we can pick some of our good athletes and footballers all from there. Because previously, those were the areas we were getting most of the athletes, including the security services. Thank you very much. You served on the ECOWAS parliament. And as chairman was introducing you, you rose to be deputy speaker. Is that correct? Yes, please. Four deputy speakers. Sir. What reforms do you want to see happen in relation to the ECOWAS parliament vis-a-vis -vis Ghana 
what should we do? Uh, do how do we elect our members? What more pronounced role do you want the ECOWAS Parliament to play? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. If members will recall, somewhere in 2014, we submitted a proposal where we had wanted member states to elect members to the ECOWAS Parliament outside the national parliament. But uh, this was shut down here during the uh, Authority of Health and State Summit here in Accra. I also say they can still fight for that so that they can get enhancement of their activities at the ECOWAS Parliament level. Again, we may have to look at the contributions to our ECOWAS. And this issue of sovereignty, if you take the funding of ECOWAS, Nigeria contributes about 60%. Ghana contributes about 15%. That is the second highest. Between the two alone, it's about 75%. But when it comes to voting, a sovereignty basis. So each country has the same vote. We may have to look at all these things going forward. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman, just concluding on your CV, the last page nine, what is it that I'm reading? Letter of commendation and award of one million Ghana cities. Is that right? Yes. Who gave you the award of one million Ghana cities? It's Agricultural Development Bank. And they gave you one million? Yes, those days. Not for what? Now. For 2, what? For what? And it's unfortunate for, for good performance. Let me see if I can get it somewhere here. One, one million doses is 2,000. It's unfortunate that I didn't know you. Uh, it's unfortunate I didn't know you and you were not my friend. I have shared with you, but this one <laughs> I shared with my staff. I'm not interested in the sharing. Is that reflecting correctly? One million Ghana cities? No, 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 no Ghana cities. So you, you look at it, cities. There's no Ghana uh, there. Okay. Read it well. One million cities. Yeah, that's the old cities. Uh, you are still reporting as a then. 100,000. 100, no, no, no. It just struck me. Now, when you were responding to the Honorable Deputy Leader, you said your beautiful, uh, the kente you are wearing was a gift. Gift. Is that correct? Use your mic. Use your mic. Oh, it's a gift. Yes, yeah, it's a gift from a friend. Gift registered within the code and ethics of Ghana as required by law. No, not that one. Or oh, this one. Is a Chama, friend? Chama yeah. says it doesn't qualify. So it doesn't I'll, qualify. I'll, I'll, I'll end with a profound statement that the uh, Olusogu Obasanjo made about gifts in the true cultural sense. Yes. And gifts meant to corrupt. That is not to associate you with it. Uh, he said that those other gifts that are cultural, they are normally a token, and they are given in the open. I hope that this gift of Kente is a token, and yes. it's given in the open. Chama, with this, I'm done. Thank you. Yes, it was given in the open, the princess of my wife and my family members. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can see, honorable, you can see my beautiful wife sitting there giving me the support. Uh, we, unfortunately, we can't see her face. So. <laughs> <laughs> honorable Minister, I just want to make this observation. For all the entry entries to an exit of Kumasi, from Santasi entering Kumasi, until to your constituency entering Kumasi, Swami entering Kumasi. Bekwai. Bekwai is part of Santasi. Mm -hmm. You see that the traffic holdups in the evenings and in the mornings are extreme now. When I was a young man, even with my rickety vehicle, 20 minutes from my young quarter to center, 20 minutes I'm there. But today, nothing will let me leave the choir for Kumasi in the morning. Because it was, I will spend not less than two hours. 
That's about 30 kilometers. My observation is that the problem has nothing other than driver indiscipline. Look at all the places where the bottlenecks are. You will spend about an hour from Kochi. When you get to Adenohokadaso, the problem is the drivers who are using the left and right are stationed. As soon as you cross there, there's a free movement. When you're coming from uh, your constituency, you get to Atunsu. The problem is at the station, opposite the hospital. As soon as you leave there, there's a free movement. Coming from um, Sunyani towards Premper College, the problem is just around where the station is. I urge you to, at the very least, put your security men to regulate the activities of the commercial drivers that have created stations at those entrances. It will ease the traffic for us. On that note, um, we thank you for attending upon the house to answer questions. You are discharged for now. You hear from us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you. Honorable members, we have uh, about one hour, five minutes. 